Welcome to the State Library at the North Carolina Department of Cultural Resources instructional series we're calling Information University, or Inform You for short. Our work is supported by a Library Services and Technology Act funded North Carolina statewide leadership grant. In recent years, there has been a lot of talk about the cloud. Despite cloud storage and services having been around for a long time, it is only in the past few years that the cloud has been marketed to public consumers. So what is it? According to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the cloud is a model for enabling convenient on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. For most people, this explanation is about as clear as mud. There are different types of cloud services. SAAS, or Software as a Service, PAAS, Platform as a Service, and IAAS, Infrastructure as a Service, which give you different levels of control over your information and what the provider is expected to do for you. To simplify things, the cloud is basically storage space, software, and other resources that are located somewhere outside of your building, usually in a data center, where your data and applications are saved and run that you can access through an internet browser or app. Behind the scenes, what makes the cloud special is that it is very nimble and the system can automatically move around resources without much human intervention. As a cloud user, you can usually access your data from anywhere at any time. The necessary hardware and software is maintained by the company you are paying and you can buy more storage space as you need it. You can choose how much data or how many IT capabilities to pass off to the cloud service provider. Consider, for example, your email. Gmail or Yahoo takes care of the hardware and software necessary to support your email account and the accounts of millions of other people. You only need to go to an internet browser or app to access your mail. What is the difference between IAAS, PAAS, and SAAS? With infrastructure as a service, the computing resources are essentially rented as an all-in-one package so agencies don't have to purchase their own. This option is quickly growing in popularity within government. Platform as a service is similar, while also providing tools for the consumer to use to create software. The consumer controls software deployment and configuration settings, while the provider provides hardware and the services required to host and develop those applications. Platform as a service is not as common in state government. Lastly, software as a service, sometimes referred to as on-demand software, is where the software and associated data are hosted on the cloud and you access the software through a web browser. A common example here would be Google Apps. This service is common in federal and state government. While each option has its merits, it is important to think about what your office really needs and what capabilities and level of control is desired. There are many advantages in moving to the cloud. It can be cheaper than paying to maintain existing IT infrastructure. You won't need as much space or need to power as many servers. This can free up IT staff to work on mission critical projects instead of maintaining old equipment. An ROI analysis would be needed before you decide on a cloud service provider to decide if you would be saving money or just reallocating it. Documents and services can be quickly and efficiently shared. Cloud services play well with mobile devices for an increasingly mobile workforce. You do not need to be in the same building as your data storage to access your documents or information. As cloud service vendors gain more experience and expertise, they are able to provide a wider variety of services. There are risks and challenges to adopting the cloud in your organization. For government offices considering the cloud, public records laws and information technology policies require special consideration, especially where confidential records are involved. North Carolina state agencies must adhere to the statewide information security manual, federal confidentiality statutes including HIPAA and FERPA, and General Statute 132. Not all clouds were created equal. Some are slower than others, and you should expect some downtime where an error has occurred and you cannot access your data. 
What guarantees does the vendor make for uptime, throughput, and response time? As with any contract, you must ensure that both parties understand and comply with the agreement. Establishing a good relationship with your service provider during the adoption process will improve communication and help both parties understand what services are needed and desired. What security features and guarantees does the provider offer? You will need to discuss different options for encryption and security protocols and you will need to consult with your IT department. Will you be able to remove data from the cloud and avoid vendor lock-in? There may be fees associated with downloading your data, or your data may download in formats you can't open outside of the cloud. Other concerns to keep in mind are the recovery of data if there is a server failure or the company goes out of business, and getting data back if the organization wants to end their relationship with the service provider. So, if you are going to pick a cloud service provider, what things do you need to keep in mind? First, you need to talk to your IT and legal departments. What legal and policy requirements do you face? Do you have any confidential records? The number of people and their job functions that will be assisted or changed by the cloud? Do you need to go with software as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service? Are you sharing your cloud services with another organization? Will your entire organization be using the cloud services or just a certain group of people within your office? How much do you want to outsource? Do you still want some control over your hardware or software? Understanding your agency and employees is vital. It is nice to have flashy new systems, but if nobody can understand how they work, nobody will use them correctly. It is essential to think about data security. Depending on your organization, you may have different security and confidentiality requirements, and the service provider needs to fully understand what you need and expect. It is good to prepare a contingency plan for an unexpected data loss. Once you choose a provider, testing is critical. You can identify potential problems and verify data recovery times and data integrity before the services are launched. The processes and procedures should be documented and saved in multiple locations. Having the right tools for your organization's mission and day-to-day -day tasks is important. Sometimes it is good to start small. You can buy more storage space and more options if you need them. In choosing a cloud service provider, you need to know what you need, how it works, and how your data will be kept safe. Take the time to think these things through and your move to the cloud will be more successful. We hope you have enjoyed this video about cloud computing.